Welcome to Nomad PHP Lightning Talks. I'm Joe Ferguson. Nomad PHP Lightning Talks are a 10 minute talk that gives a high level overview or an in depth look at a small portion of a PHP related topic. Lightning Talks are a great way for new speakers to build their speaking resume and for longtime speakers to test drive new talk ideas. If you'd like to give a 10 minute Lightning Talk, please email joe at nomadphp.com. Right now we have Miles Cook and he's going to talk about making the move to Elasticsearch. Please make sure you visit Joined in after the talk and leave Miles some feedback. Miles, I'll make you presenter and take it away. Thanks very much, Joe. So, uh, yep, my name is Miles Cook. I'm a Chief Technical Officer at uh, Blurt. Uh, we are a social media uh, data analytics company. Um, been around three years. I uh, made the move to a tech startup and uh, it's been quite interesting, it's been quite a journey. And uh, from there, built up a team. And uh, there was uh, three of us about two and a half uh, years ago. I went out to 12, so um, we've come a fair way. And my talk is on making the move to Elasticsearch uh, from our experiences, or from my experience. And um, yeah, uh, so I'll tell you a little bit about uh, us, a bit, bit more about us. So about Blurt, we ingest and analyze tens of thousands of tweets. Um, we also do Instagram, Facebook posts, YouTube comments. Uh, we also have recently had a go at ingesting Twitch uh, comments as well because they come in thick, thick and fast if you've ever seen Twitch. We can generate topics from that tech gender, tech language, emotions, entity and various sentiment and emotions towards certain entities. Um, we do this for uh, real-time events, uh, TV shows um, uh, and uh, we actually start off using MySQL for the data side of things uh, for storage and the, the, and the reporting but what I found was when I was trying to optimize and optimize and optimize, I just suddenly thought, hang on a second, maybe there's a glass ceiling here. Maybe I'm going to be spending lots of time going down a cul-de-sac, a technical cul-de-sac. I need to find uh, something we could drop in and replace. Hence, lots and lots of research. As an aside, I did look at VaultDB as well, uh, quite an interesting uh, database technology. But um, I tried out Elasticsearch and it was reliable. It was uh, more mature and out of the box. It really impressed. So that's where we are now. Right, what I first did, which is what I'm gonna explain on this slide, uh, slide is I, I dipped our toes in the water a little bit because I didn't want to uh, upset customers. I wanted to get, um, get familiar with Elasticsearch uh, as much as possible. And it comes with a great tool called uh, Cabana. Cabana is something you install uh, on um, on any server, as long as you've got permissions to the Elasticsearch cluster, and uh, you can actually uh, create a river, so my Mongo rivers or MySQL rivers, to your Elastic uh, cluster. So in this case, um, I had our in entire data set and uh, shot it over to Elastic into an index, and um, did a query every five minutes to keep that keep that index up to date. So I had a bit of parallel running which is uh, always a good idea uh, with any new technology to um, get more comfortable with it. So uh, I abstracted our database layer a bit more than it uh, was at the time, uh, which was a good call, and um, injected in either the MySQL object uh, interface or the Elastic object interface, um, depending on the, the settings. Then you can, once you've got your data into Elastic, you can use Cabana, it's a really, um, it's a bit daunting at first, but it's a really friendly, uh, really easy way to slice and dice and interrogate your data very, very quickly. We collected a lot of social data on the Scottish referendum. Uh, here, in, here in the UK, uh, we had, the Scots had a referendum to determine whether they wanted to be independent or not. And um, it was really interesting having a look at the data, getting a response back, looking for topics, getting a response, response back in a fraction of a second refining that search, doing another search. And it was really interesting just playing with the data. Um, the buzzword big data is banded about far too much by liking. I think we deal in medium data, dealing with gigabytes, not terabytes data personally. But it was quite, it was quite interesting to be able to play with the data in the way that MySQL just wouldn't let us do. Right, so if everybody's uh, quite excited by this prospect and wants to move to Elasticsearch, Using good old Composer, you can just simply do a require elastic search and away you go at the top there. And quite simply, if you're doing a, any kind of dependency injection in your uh, data stats layer, then 
instantiate a new Elasticsearch client with your connection parameters and do some simple simple calls. Uh, you build up pram, uh, parameters uh, with what index you're searching and the search terms. I'm not going to go into detail into that, into that slide. There's brilliant documentation on the Elasticsearch website on how to do all this, um, how to do all the searching. Uh, lots and lots of powerful features, aggregations, putting things in buckets, zeroing um, bits of uh, bucket that um, there is no data for, uh, which is brilliant for graphs, uh, which I only discovered uh, recently in the last few days, and even sent even set in sort of minimum, maximum um, uh, timestamps or or bucket ranges, and get in a whole load of um, zero data uh, if there is no data which you can simply just then send to your presentation layer rather than trying to zero lots of data yourself. Um, there's lots of powerful features uh, in Elasticsearch. Um, one of them, uh, another one is uh, significant topics, which is lovely. So you can search for um, topics, not just by how prevalent they are, you know, the most uh, occurring topic within some text, but you can actually say, well, give us the most significant topic, and what that does is it looks at um, looks at the filter that you've applied, looks at topics within that filter and topics outside that filter, and then decides what's most uncommonly common uh, within your data set. And it's really, uh, really quite interesting to see um, that the topics within certain filters that we might apply in our field of work uh, compared to the background data um, is quite powerful. So uh, there's another way you can interrogate your data, which is just by uh, sending curl commands. It's um, Elastic is a service. So you simply put your, your nodes in your cluster behind a load balancer, um, set up round robin, and uh, you can scale up. It's, it's fantastic. You have one endpoint, you have one um, URL, and uh, you know that you've got a horde of um, uh, nodes, or just uh, three or so. Uh, behind that, uh, which will uh, do all the work for you. So yeah, um, why would you make the move to Elastic? Well, it's it's fast, it's fast, it's fast. Um, those are my top three um, features. It scales brilliantly as well. Um, you you could just literally throw uh, servers at this. Um, we we just use virtual servers with lots of memory. Um, it is hungry for memory. Um, that's why it's so fast. It indexes everything by default and it kind of looks at, when it does searches, it, it looks at the indexes, indices rather, um, first and then goes to the record from that. Um, it's, uh, it's really pow uh, quite powerful uh, way of being quite quick. Fault tolerance, yes, um, because there's, uh, there is by default uh, replication on your shards, which we'll come on to in a second. So, um, yeah, your uh, as long as you've got uh, one copy of the uh, shard somewhere, then uh, you're okay. And ordinarily, if you're only down to one copy of the shard, Elasticsearch will try to uh, make another replica of that um, as as quick as it can. And um, and yeah, like I say, it's uh, it's quite quick. Terminology, because this is um, this is the with the barrier to entry, the major barrier to entry for myself is trying to learn all this terminology. So, when they talk about index and indices, it's quite quite confusing with you know your standard MySQL indexes. They're talking about the actual tables, and that is partly because the tables themselves are the indices, the indexes that you would normally set up. Um, you know, the, the data is kind of. Um, stored elsewhere, but the main thing it interrogates is the indices. That's why it's so quick. A node is your server that's running Elastic uh, within your data cluster. Uh, that can be virtual or dedicated. A cluster is all your nodes of your Elasticsearch nodes. You might have uh, three nodes, um, for example. That's a good. That's a good start. Um, a shard is um, where your uh, indexes are uh, sliced into. Um, typically, by default, you'll have five shards per index, um, that's, uh, that can be overkill. Uh, yellow shards is when, as I mentioned earlier, you have no replicas of your shards. That's actually okay for development, but certainly not production replicas. Uh, how many shard copies you have distributed throughout the cluster. Your master node, very important. You certainly want uh, three in production. There's lots of documentation why 
um, but uh, it's, it is pretty vital um, so you don't get something called split brain. Data node, as shards allocated, you can actually have data nodes and master nodes uh, on the same server, uh, be in the same node, that's absolutely fine. If you have a node that has no master or no data uh, responsibilities, then it's simply a client node and they're good for um, your, end, your end point uh, and your load balancer, but that might be a bit overkill. There are a few gotchas. You certainly want three master nodes in production to avoid something called split brain personality, or split brain, I guess. Um, if you have uh, a normal amount of data, unless you have hundreds of gigabytes, go with one shard, not the default five. Uh, I think the default five is just to showcase how fast and powerful it can be. Um, don't have hundreds of shards. You, you want a dozen or so, um, because otherwise, uh, if you have lots more, then you see a big drop off in performance, irrespective of the data size. And if you close indices to save space to do self-performance, uh, bear in mind that they do not get replicated, which is um, quite painful if you don't know that. Many thanks for watching. Uh, if you've got any questions, uh, fire away. Nope, no questions. Thanks for joining us for another Nomad PHP Lightning Talk. If you'd like to give a Lightning Talk, please email joe at nomadphp.com. Please make sure you visit JoinIt and leave Miles some feedback.